it's pretty self-explanatory. It, we're going to be discussing self-doubt, confidence, uh, fear, and then I'm going to finish up with just a couple of kind of tasks, hopefully for you guys to go away with. Um, so I, naturally, I don't really know how or you know what what you guys are up to in your journeys, what what exact goals you have got. Um, so I've kept it a little bit generic as much as I can do without kind of pigeonholing anyone. Um, but re realist, well, really, what my key um, goal is here tonight is to give you guys some strategies and real things you can actually walk away with. So I'm a lot different to um, any other coaches you might have come across where. I talk about positivity and yeah, positivity is great, but it's not just as simple as thinking positive and turning up every day and trying, trying your hardest. Sometimes the, this self-confidence barrier and fear is these, these are real, um, real obstacles that people struggle, struggle to get past. I've been through my own fair share um, and no doubt you guys have as well. So I really wanted to come on and share some actual strategies that will help you guys. Um, let in someone else in a second and what i'll do if you don't if you don't mind i'm just going to pop you guys on mute um just as the the, the the extra ones come in as well if there is any questions um feel free to pop them in the group or into the chat um and then i'll pick them up then as they come in um and i can touch on anything that you guys need me to do so um let me see. There we go. So first and foremost, a little bit about me, guys. I won't waste too much time about me. I really want it to be about you guys. Um, so this is a little bit about me. I'm a dad. Um, I am a uh, fiance, so my partner's downstairs. Um, so one thing I won't be doing tonight, guys, I won't be trying to understand how the difficulties really of, of being a single parent um, because not don't want to really want to patronize anyone I, I don't really know those true struggles um so not going to share my story from that side but i'm going to share more about my experiences and and, and the um the strategies that have helped me and help and I, and I use with my clients uh started my career as a professional footballer believe it or not uh it's not a dream that i ended up working out but i got uh got pretty far and now I'm an, an accredited life, a life coach focusing more on mindset and performance. And there we go. So I'm just getting used to this, uh, sharing this presentation because I don't tend, I don't normally use Zoom. There we go. Um, and a little bit about my vision. So although I'm not uh, a single parent myself, I am a product of, of a single or, or a broken home. Both parents split up when I was two. Um, and hopefully, if anything, um, me sharing my story tonight will uh, will kind of give you guys the confidence that actually doesn't matter what goes on in your parenting lives, probably won't screw up as much as my parents did, and uh, I didn't end up too bad. So <laughs> uh, hopefully, that's a bit of a positive. Um, but yeah, I'm, I did start this business inspired by my mum actually more than anyone because my mother didn't uh, didn't end up finding a true way in life and. I do believe if she had the right guidance, she would have gone on to do some good things, but uh, unfortunately she didn't and she struggled to find her way. Um, and again, got myself into a, uh, some sticky situations as a young as a young 20 year old, got myself in some credit card and, and loan debt um, and a lot of my experiences and, and the things that have landed me to be a coach today are some of the, the strategies and techniques that got me out of that, uh, out of that sticky mess. And I created this coaching business really with a vision of, of helping parents to, to be the best version of themselves. Um, although it is a, a more dad focused meetup today, um, I, do, I do work with mums as well. And bear with me guys, I'm just gonna check the, uh, the chat a second, not the chat, the, uh, see if anyone else has come in. No, they haven't, there we go. Resume share. Um, so what we're going to be covering today, we're going to be looking at the belief cycle. So breaking the cycle of negative beliefs. We're looking at inner confidence. Um, and it's not just like I said, it's not just about talking to yourself and believing in, in your abilities. We're really going to be just discussing where these come from and why we lack, lack that inner confidence, because no doubt confidence is the elephant in the room for most of us. Um, 
at one point or another, maybe right now or in the past, you have uh, struggled with confidence. I know I have, um, and I, if anyone tells you that they haven't, they are lying. So it's the elephant in the room for everyone. One of the biggest topics that I discuss, uh, not just with clients, but in the coaching world as well. We're also then gonna be looking at fear. And I really wanna break that down for you guys. There's some, uh, some real good anag anagrams around fear and, and uh, topics around why the fear isn't real crushing negative thoughts. And then by the end, uh, hopefully guys, I'll give you some, some real useful tools to go away with and uh, to really put into practice on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so just a little uh, definition there of confidence and self-belief. Confidence is the feeling or belief that one can have faith in or rely on something or someone. Now, the key word there is, is rely um it really really is the ability to rely on someone or something if you can think about someone uh in your, in your past someone in your life someone that you can trust someone that always turns up someone that is there and you have complete confidence in and this is how i'm going to really kind of break this down for you guys the reason that you have confidence in if, if you can think of someone um the re the reason you have confidence in them is because they always come through they're always there. Whenever you can call on, on them, they are there and they turn up for you. So they have that pattern of always coming through, always giving you that, that belief that you can rely on them whenever you need them. Uh, and believe it or not, that then is, is the reason that you're leading to have confidence in them. Um, and confidence in ourselves actually works exactly the same way. So if you could think back over past experiences, maybe a time where you felt really, really confident, Look, I'm going to use sport as an analogy because I am a bit of a sportsman myself. Um, but maybe playing a specific sport, if you're really, really confident at something, whether it's tennis or golf or football or rugby, look back over your history with that sport. It's very often uh, that you've had really good experiences. You, you could always rely on yourself in that situation. Um, and up until this point, your, your experiences have been really positive, which is why you're feeling very confident. Now, if you look at the situations where you're not so confident, these situations often stem from your, the, your history with that. So whatever it might be, whatever kind of task or, or situation where you're not feeling so confident, that can stem right back to, to, to the very first situation where you felt found yourself in there. Um, and maybe that didn't go too well. It wasn't a very good experience for you. And what's happened is it's almost like a snowball effect up until now, whether it's over the past five, 10, 20 years, whatever it might be, it's led to you not having much confidence in that situation. So to break it, to really break it down, the confidence is, is, is that, that sentence at the top there where it says it's the ability to have faith in or rely on something or someone. And you are, you are relying in, your, in any situation on your ability within that situation or naturally the way that you feel in that situation. Um, and this is, <laughs> this is now where we go right back to the first time and uh, it is all, it's all men in here. So I, I, I don't really need to keep it too clean. Uh, but I'm just checking the chat. Oh, still good. Um, so if you, if you know, if you do remember um, your, your first time, and uh, I know my first time uh, wasn't very good. And the fact of the matter is you are meant to be good the first time. And that is the fact across any situation you find yourself in, no matter where it is, whether it's uh, whether it, it, it could be dating, it could be sports, it could be absolutely anything. You just check in the chat. Um, you aren't meant to be good until that first time, uh, at that first time. So why do we let the fir our first time ruin our lifetime? That is an absolute peach of a question. If you, again, if you think back to your first time, the first time you had, uh, first time you had sex, um, I'm just going to you know, go straight in with it. Um, you didn't let that ruin the rest of your life, did you? You didn't have that first encounter and then never, ever do it again. And one of the key, one of the reasons behind that is because of the level of expectation that we actually set ourselves at that moment in time. Now, it's no secret that the first time you have sex, you know, you're not, you're not meant to be very good. You know, you're not meant to know what you're doing. 
and we're comfortable with that as human beings going into that first encounter. And I think it's probably a very good example, actually, because the norm is you're not very good. So you have low expectations. And then when you're not very good, you don't disappoint yourself and you know that you build from there. Now, oftentimes where we're heading into something, holding huge expectations, whether that is, you know, again, sport, whether it's applying for a job, whether it's uh, talking to a partner and, you, you know, you're out in a bar and you're talking to uh, who, you know, whoever it is you might be interested in, um, or, you, you know, you're, you're writing your CV or you're, you're going for a promotion, you're holding such high expectations that when that doesn't work out, you're coming crashing down to the ground. So just relaying back to our, to our first time, which I'll, keep, I'll, keep, I'll call it, um, the, the, the key difference is, there is, is our level of expectation. It's not actually the outcome that is the killer for us. It's the level of expectation that we set ourselves. Um, I don't like to use the word, the word unrealistic because I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm all for setting massive goals and, and trying to strive. But if we can control our level of expectation, certainly on our first time, um we then don't come crashing to the to, to the ground and what then tends to happen again over a lifetime of of uh of bad experiences start stemming all the way from that first first encounter uh whether like i said whether it's applying for a job your very first job you don't get it you're so disheartened and you're so down because of your, your high level of expectation that then clouds a massive judge cloud well, put, puts a, a large cloud of smoke over every other job you apply for and you start talking to yourself and you start telling yourself that you're no good you didn't get that first one so why will you get the next one uh and it's, it's, it's just a snowball effect um and it does mention there just to come into social pressure very often um if we think maybe back to uh back to when we were in school um that social pressure was massive certainly maybe from a sport perspective um we think we should be great at something because someone else is. And in all honesty, doesn't matter what other people are. Couldn't, couldn't give two shits. Um, if someone else is great at something, that's great for them. But that doesn't mean and that doesn't, that doesn't set the standard for you because at the end of the day, we're all on our own journey. And we all have our own kind of mountains to climb and we, we all get there at different times, which is, is really key to remember. But as human beings, as we always do throughout our lives, we set our expectations on what society says is acceptable. And, and, and very often these high levels of acceptance are, are, are right up there. And, and it's very, very hard to kind of live your life always wanting, always expecting to get to, to this certain high level. If we get there, great. But the problem is when we don't get there, we come crashing down. Um, and uh, not only do, do, our, do our journeys get, get uh, get stopped but uh, our confidence gets smashed and very often then we kind of shy away from from uh, from wanting to do that task or the, be in that situation ever again and again like it says there it leads to a lifetime of low confidence and shattered belief and no doubt uh, some of you can identify there to assuming that identity of failure um, based on other people's standards and not your own And there we go. This is this is this is really key. This is really key to remember, guys. When certainly from uh, when when you're thinking when you're thinking back, maybe maybe some of this now can if you're thinking back to previous situations where you've been lacking confidence, um, you can actually reframe those experiences. You can reframe the way that you saw uh, maybe a job interview go back in the day. Um, maybe it didn't go too well, and and you started beating yourself up. But actually, you're not an expert. Um, nobody's an expert. An expert, and, and on the on the on the screen there is a list of experts, so-called experts, is professional athletes, doctors, solicitors, teachers, um, big-time business moguls. But what do all the people above uh, and and many other specialists have in common? And what they having what they all have in common is they're all human beings who knew very little to nothing about the industry before they got started so why do we have such high expectations all right when it comes to to the things that we do because we are not experts certainly not at the start um 
bear with me, just letting someone in. Um, yeah, certainly not at the start. We are not experts. So why we expect to be and why we expect these crazy outcomes on, on uh, when, when, we're, when we're trying something is, uh, is, out, is well, it's beyond me. Um, and it, we only harm ourselves really in, in, in our confidence levels and our self-belief. Because when something doesn't become, doesn't turn out amazing on the first go or the second go, we, uh, we start looking internally for something to blame and someone to blame. And naturally that, that always ends up being ourselves. We're the ones that are, uh, are not very good. We're, the, we're, we're shit at this and we're shit at that. And, and we should have done better here and we should have done better there. But if you look at these, the list of, uh, of experts here on the screen, it take, takes a doctor 10 years plus to, to get to where they are in, in, in their careers, solicitors six years plus, teachers four years plus, and people in business well over 10 years sometimes to build empires and, and multi-million pound businesses. So it takes time. It takes time to get there. And you know, if, if, you, if you do have a, a certain scenario in, in mind uh, in, in which you are low in confidence, maybe go back, trace it all the way back. Where did that, where did that confidence, that low confidence start? And when it did start, were your, were your judgments warranted? Were you a little harsh on yourself? Because it takes time to become good at something. Um, and that's a, a quote that I love there. Greatness isn't something you're born with, it's something that you create. Um, and maybe sometimes I think we expect to be excellent at stuff. Um, I'm just gonna. It leads lovely now into uh, into the the belief cycle. But something I'd like I said, I want to give you guys um, things to go away with. I want to give you guys uh, kind of frameworks and tools to use. So um, one of the key things that I do use with my clients is um, we look at creating initial creating initial confidence in any situation. I know it sounds a little bit uh, a little bit far fetched at times, but it is possible. So confidence in any situation. And again, use your own examples. Think back when I when I go over these three uh, these 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 three areas to how you felt during those those situations of low confidence, um, and maybe you can relate that and kind of look back at how maybe you could have done things a little bit differently um, to maybe generate some more confidence. But the three key areas that we look at is our our internal voice, so the words that we say to ourselves our internal imagery, imagery, sorry, the things that we see and our body language. So these three, three key areas when we come to generate initial confidence in any situation, um, and it is possible, it does seem a little bit false at times, uh, but with practice and repetitiveness and, um, and, and forming new habits, it is possible then to generate confidence literally at the drop of a hat. Um, and the way, that we, the way that we do this is, first of all, we look at our internal words, the words that we say to ourselves when we're going into any situation. Um, and, and if you can start to monitor this, you'll act, actually become aware initially of all the negative things that you're saying to yourself. You're, you'll, you'll tell yourself you can't do it. You're not very good. Last time didn't work out. So why will this time? And, you'll, and no wonder when you start saying those things to yourself, why you don't feel very confident in, in those situations. So what we start to do, we, we, we want to reframe those the, the, the things that we're saying. So with our internal our, our internal voice, um, we want to start saying to ourselves that you, we can do this. Um, you, know, you, take a, you take a deep breath. I can do this. I am good. Or it may be a case of I understand it. I'm not good right now, but actually I haven't done this very often. So I shouldn't be very good, but I just need to practice. And when you start reframing the words that you say to yourself, you'll start to feel a little release of, uh, of pressure, that, that pressure that kind of holds your shoulders down. Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll kind of feel that release go because you, you're letting yourself off. And, and you're starting to, to trust the words that you're saying to yourself. Um, and again, then very similar with the internal imagery. So whenever you're going into a situation, um, very often, if you're in a negative mindset, you'll start to envisage the outcome, but it won't be going very well. Um, I've been there myself, especially when I, you know, I, I do still play football now. Um, and sometimes when I'm in a bit of a dip, of dip, a dip in confidence, you, I'll start to see maybe my touch a little bit loose or missing chances or something like that. But 
you start to replay, you start to play the scenario before it even happens. And no doubt um, you've done that in situations uh, where something's about to happen or you're going to go and do something, but you've already figured out the outcome before it's happened and you've talked yourself out of it. Um, so if you can start to reframe that and flip those images in your head, along with your internal voice, the positive, the positive talk, and then the positive imagery, you're starting to see that situation um, play out before it happens. It's going well, it goes in your, in your favor. Um, you start again to feel a little bit more confident. Now, these three work really well together. This is where it comes into its own, is in your body language. Now, I, I think they say something along the lines of during communication, I think 80% of your, the, your communication is through your body language. Um, so people don't actually listen to, they do listen to what you say um, and the way you say it, but very often it's how you say it. So you can, you can see people like, like myself now being very expressive um, and people see that, that comes across to people. Um, so likewise, when you're, when you're approaching a situation and, and your shoulders are, uh, are kind of tucked in and your arms are tucked in and you're, you're, you're hunched over, um, you're giving off that, that lack of confidence and, um, and no confidence ringing yourself. And that, what that does actually is send biofeedback. So that's called biofeedback, biofeedback into your brain. And again, along with that, uh, the voice, the imagery and the biofeedback going into your brain, it actually creates that lack of confidence and you just don't feel it. Um, so how we do that, we flip all, all three of those, the internal voice, the imagery and the body language to almost trick your brain in that instance to in, into a false positive. Um, and then over time, it becomes a habit as everything does. You practice and practice and practice. And before you know it, that confidence is natural. Um, so that is, that's something that, um, you can, you can actually use, you can use that from today. It really, really works. I really advise that you guys take that and use it. Um, but this leads really well into the belief cycle. So talking about how a lack of confidence breeds, uh, from, from initial, uh, experiences, maybe when you're younger in school or in, in your early twenties, wherever it might be. Um, how your experiences create this belief of lack of confidence. You, you're not very good at something, so you have no confidence in it. And this is where it starts. So, or where it starts and where it continues, I should say. Um, so this is the belief cycle, belief, potential, action, results. The amount of belief that you have determines the potential that you believe you have or you can tap into. The amount of potential that you can tap into determines the amount of action you take. The amount of action you take determines the results you get and the results you get determines the belief you have in yourself. Now, very often, I don't know if you can see my cursor uh, on the screen, we get stuck in this region here, belief. We get stuck here in negative belief, low belief, low self-belief, self-esteem, whatever you want to call it, we get stuck in this area of belief. And when it's negative, we end up believing we have no potential. No potential or believing we have no potential leads to no action. And no action leads to no results. And no results, guess what? Leads to believing that you have nothing to give. You, you have low confidence, you're not very good. So why should you do anything in the first place? And this corner of belief I, you know, again, like I said, I've been there myself, no doubt, guys, you've been, in, uh, been there at some point or at some stage or another, that corner of belief feels like the end of the world, it feels like you just, in any given situation, whatever it might be, you are absolutely helpless, and that's how you feel. Um, so the key question here is, hopefully you're asking it, is how do you break it? How do you break the belief cycle? Uh, bear with me. Absolutely. Yeah, Nick. Yeah. Believe you can. And you're halfway there. Absolutely. Belief is. Belief is, it's just so powerful. It's so, so powerful. Um, and 
it's, it's, it's powerful, it's easily, it's easily manipulated, believe it or not, but with the right tools and, and the know-how. Once you have that and you open up your mind and increase your awareness around that, it's, it seems a little bit more easy. Um, but unless you kind of have those tools and you and you know that, it then seems the complete opposite of, uh, it's like the end, you know, it's an impossible task. Um, so yes, how do we break the cycle? Um, and the answer is in the question. We break the cycle. Um, and the only way to break the cycle is literally to take a leap of faith. Um, and you can take action towards your goals. So I'm just going to pop back onto this screen. A leap of faith, um, a false positive, some real, some real courage to take some action and almost, again, trick your brain into, into believing in yourself again. Because once you take action, no matter how small, it doesn't have to be huge. I'm not saying go and run a marathon or go and ask someone out, or I'm just saying no matter what the action is, however small, action breeds results. And whatever the, and when you get those results, you'll start to have a little bit more belief, just a little bit. If it's small action, you get a little bit more belief. And with a little bit more belief, you might then start to realize, oh, all right, then I, I believe in myself a little bit. Maybe I'll, maybe I, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can. Uh, all right, then maybe I'll take a little bit more action then. So you take a little bit more and you get a little, and you get a, one, one more result. You get a little bit more results, a few more results, I should say. Um, and then you get a little bit more belief and a little bit more belief. You start to think of oh, maybe I've got a little bit more potential than I originally thought. And you start to take a little bit more action and the cycle continues just as it does in a negative way. It continues in a positive way as well. And just from initially taking action, that is a leap of faith. That is just some, maybe some Dutch courage, if that's what you need. Um, something that's going to get you taking action and generating some sort of result. You don't even have to believe in yourself at this stage. You might think if it, you might think it'll fail. You do not have to believe it yourself. But one of the biggest, biggest killers of goals and dreams is procrastination. And pro procrastination very often comes from a lack of belief. And sticking in, staying in that corner of belief and sticking with the procrastination will just continue in that negative cycle and the, the cycle will never get broken. Um, and that's how I've kind of covered that there, but yeah, so taking action drives results, gives you more belief. You believe you have more potential, more potential leads to a little bit more action and more action leads to more results. Um, and then one of my, uh, it's not quite a quote, but something that, uh, that I love to I love to talk about is uh, imperfect action. A perfect moment does not exist. And we're looking at procrastination here again. Procrastination, uh, always wanting, always waiting for the right time. Let me know. Let me know in in the chat, guys, if you have. If you, I know I've I've been a, I've I've done it myself. Thought. No, I don't feel like that right now, or it's not the right time. But that's just that's just a lie that I told myself. Uh, a perfect moment doesn't exist, and a perfect time doesn't exist. Imperfect action beats perfect inaction every single time. Bit of a tongue twister, but imperfect action, that means whatever you do does not need to be perfect. It just needs to be something. And that is way better than, per than waiting for the perfect moment to take the perfect action. Because very often, nine times out of 10, that perfect moment won't come and the perfect action will definitely not follow. Okay, fear, I'm conscious of the time, so I, I, I will uh, try and be a little bit quicker, guys. Um, so what is fear? Love this one. So fear is an emotional reaction to something that seems dangerous. And again, the key word is seems. 
and it's so so key and i'll explain to you why so it's something that seems dangerous it's an emotion that we feel when we anticipate something to be dangerous it comes from the amygdala uh, part of the brain and is a defense mechanism so we have a deep innate uh, desire or need for security that's one of our human needs is to feel secure in anything that we do. Security is first or second on the list, I believe. Um, and that is where fear comes from. It's that defense mechanism to protect us and to make us feel secure. And back in the day when I, I'll call them cavemen, although, although there's the, uh, the technical terms for them, and there's many more I know, uh, it served us really well on our daily, you know, when dangerous encounters, encounters were a daily occurrence, um, when you could get eaten by God knows what animal, uh, you could get killed by other tribes, it still exists to a degree in some parts of the world today, um, and you could literally die on a daily basis. Now that is fear. Fear protected them from entering situations or going to places that could result in harm. Now, a question to ask ourselves is, in today, 2021, how often do we encounter situations that put us in harm's way? Now, I'm not talking about walking across a motorway, because that is extremely dangerous and will kill you, or could. Um, but I'm talking in our day-to-day -day lives when we're going to work or what when we're in, in, in the house with the kids or going out on trips or um, we're on social media. Uh, when, you know, how often do we encounter these situations that put us in harm's way and, and we use that fear system, I'll call it the fear system, to protect our lives? And the, quite, the answer to that is very, very infrequent <laughs> not the best term but basically never um so we, we very rarely are we in a situation where our life is is threatened um may, like i said maybe some parts of the world probably th that's that kind of scenario still exists um but very often not for most people in 2021 um so the begs the question is fear an asset or a liability if it's something that we could remove surgically, for example, like an arm, would we have it removed? Because do we do we need it? Um, and here's some of the most common fears of 2021 or the 21st century. I should uh, oh, bear with me. There we go. Uh, the 21st century, I should say. Fear of flying, heights, animals, injections, health problems. So fearing health problems. That's uh, uh, very common, uh, and that's for people who don't actually have health problems, but they fear the consequence of health problems. Uh, fear social, uh, fear of social social situations, uh, abandonment and being alone, fear of success, failure, uh, fear of other people's opinions, not being good enough, rejection, and abandonment and being alone. I've put it in there twice, so apologies for that. Now these are very real, uh, very uh, common fears that, that people ex, uh, people experience on a day-to-day -day basis um and they feel very real at that time um and i'm not uh, just because they're in a list here i'm not trying to put take anything away from those say that they're not real uh, certainly people are fe are fearing these things they're, they're the most common in, in the 21st century um but another question in a world where the risk of real physical danger is the lowest it has ever it has ever been why are phobias the most common types of psychiatric disorders? So that's quite a deep question. During a period where real physical danger is the lowest it has ever been. Why? Because uh, another quote, I, I, do I do love quotes, guys. So you'll, <laughs> I think there's probably a few in here. Um, Fear is not real by Will Smith. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. Now, I just want to go back to this, uh, this list here. How many of these, I would arguably say, 
probably most of them are not going to result in any physical danger. You know, you could argue maybe flying uh, if the plane crashes, I understand, falling from height um, and getting bitten or eaten by an animal, completely understand, and injections to a degree, you know. Um, but real physical danger, how many of these are putting us in real in, in harm's way? Um, so the majority of them, if not all, are fearing something before it even happens. So we haven't actually experienced them. We're fearing them before they happen. We think things are dangerous because it's the closest thing to danger that we experience in our lives when actually they aren't dangerous at all. They're just an illusion of danger. And this leads us on nicely to fear. This is a, a, a lovely anagram. Um, very, very popular. I think it started, the, it, it was designed in the 80s. So I, I'm not going to take credit for it. It's not my design. But fear is false evidence appearing real. Now, again, have a, have a little think back to times where you feared something. Um, it could, you know, hopefully there's nothing. I, hopefully, I, like I said, I don't really don't know everyone. Um, hopefully there's no uh, situations where you've you know, really feared for your life. And if so, I do apologize for maybe not uh, for, for mentioning that. But um, hopefully, you know, we're discussing now situations that uh, that aren't uh, putting you in, in, in harm's way. Um, and very often, if, if it's any of the, uh, these off, uh, from, from any from these lists, sorry, I can't get my words out. Um, then this certainly this anagram is, is very accurate. It's false evidence appearing real. So if you can think of back to a situation when you feared something, were you fearing, were you fearing something that didn't actually exist or something that hadn't even happened? Um, and again, I, I'm a big fan of Will Smith. The, there is a video on YouTube of him talking about his experience um, jumping from a plane. And he talks about how his fear stopped him from sleeping. It stopped him from eating. Um, it ruined his whole holiday before the, before the jump out of the plane because he knew he had to jump out of a plane. Um, and it wasn't until he jumped out of the plane that he realized it was the most exhilarating feeling of his life. And it was the best experience he'd had. And that is very often what we do with ourselves when we, when we're in, when we fear things, we fear something that hasn't even happened. We don't even know how it's going to turn out. Um, and we let it, let it ruin our experiences. And sometimes we base fear on other people's experiences which again is, is you know, nothing to do with us. Other people's experiences are not ours. Um, and we let that ruin our experiences because of fear. We create them in our minds before it happens and it stops us from taking action. Uh, it limits us as individuals, as human beings, and it limits us more importantly as parents, friends, and partners. Um, and well, the first one certainly more, uh, more importantly, parents, um, if we're fearing something, an outcome, how does that then impact our parenting skills or abilities or styles? So again, I, like I said, I want you to, to be able to go away with something. I don't just want to be giving you information. Um, hopefully you're not tired of uh, the sound of my voice. Um, but how do we overcome fear? So another, another anagram. Um, and the key is to find it, embrace it, take action and review. So this is a real, this is an actual actionable steps. These are actionable steps that you can take to, to help you to overcome fear, increase your awareness uh, and essentially break them down to realize that actually they're not what we think they are. So the first one is find. In order to overcome the fear, we must first find it. And awareness is absolutely key. Really, really key, because if we don't know what we're fearing, how on earth are we going to overcome it? Um, and it does happen. Sometimes we fear it. We fear a situation without actually knowing what exactly we are. We, we're fearing about a situation. So here are a couple of questions you can use to ask yourself is what specifically about this scares me? Like I said, you may be fearing something, a situation, but it may be only a small part of that that is scaring you so if you can actually overcome that that small part it's it's well the effects then are, are kind of priceless um, i'll use an example 
Uh, certainly in 2021, social media is a massive fear that I find with a lot of people. Certainly uh, anyone that's uh, looking to start businesses online, they fear putting themselves out there on social media, um, dating online, um, putting themselves out there on social media. Um, and actually, it's, it's not the social media that they end up fearing. Well, it's, it's the social media they end up fearing. But when you break it down, it's not that that they fear. They fear being uh, being vulnerable and putting their, themselves out there and uh, open for, 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 for critique. So the actual issue there is their vulnerability, but their vulnerability, not the social media. Um, so asking yourself, what specifically about this is, is scary? Is the fear based on your own experience or someone else's? And is it a physical fear or a psychological fear? Because if it's a physical fear, then the fear might be real. So if you're fearing going to a certain area because there's a high crime rate, then absolutely valid. If it's a psychological fear, is it so valid? Is it something that can be reframed? Can you start thinking about that situation from a different point of view or a different uh, with a different mindset? And why is this scaring me? A very, very, very strong question. Why? And very often we don't take the time to ask ourselves this, these types of questions, um, sometimes because we fear asking them. <laughs> so once we found it, what do we do? We embrace it. Uh, really key step. Again, we have to uh, embrace the fear and attempt to normalize it so that we can actually break it down and, re and, and kind of play down the effects of, of the fear. So, for example, we'll go. We'll use a psychological fear. Um, if it's a fear of posting online, uh, social media again, um, you may fear the reaction of other people. What other people might say. Really, really common again. Um, now, actually, when you break it down, you there's nothing to fear about other people's opinions because they can't actually hurt you. They can only hurt you if you internalize them and turn those words into something that hurts you and is and is is meaningful to you is the meaning of the words that we that, that really impact us so it can be powerful to switch our focus and our thinking about what would actually happen if this fear came to fruition and so a couple some more questions in reality what would happen now what would happen if someone gave me the, uh, a negative opinion on a post of mine or something i said actually nothing there is no outcome they would just reply to your post or they would say something negative to you and you have two options you either internalize it take the the negative meaning and go into your shell or you actually realize that okay it doesn't really mean anything i don't really care and i'm just going to carry on doing what i'm doing um what's the worst case scenario what's the worst thing that, that could actually happen if i was to post online, if I was to create a dating profile, if I was to put myself out there, if I was to set goals, what's the worst case scenario? Again, very often, not normally something that can actually physically harm you. Um, how likely is it that something will happen? And how would facing this fear help you grow? What can you learn by facing this fear? And the next one is action. Nothing happens without action. So unless, so once you've found it and you've embraced your fear, you've got two options. You can hide away and avoid whatever it is that you want to do, being held back for the rest of your life and never pursuing whatever it is you're, you're there to pursue, never achieving that goal or striving to achieve that goal. Or you can take action and eliminate, eliminate your fear once and for all. Most commonly, when people face their fears, they, do, they quickly realize that there is nothing to be scared of. The fear was psychological. It was some, It was fearing something that never, that may never or would never happen. Um, and then they realize actually they've been scared for no reason. It's, uh, it's that hindsight, isn't it? But it's always easy after the situation to realize that the, the real task comes with taking action before the situation to never end up being there. And some more questions. So how do you intend to face your fear? What do you need to do? Uh, when do you intend to do it? So this is all really around goal setting. How do you do it? When do you do it? What will you do? And how will you know when you faced it? 
And then the final piece of the puzzle, which is again, something that we, that we all take maybe for granted and we don't do so often in many areas of our life is review. Once you've faced your fear and you've acted, you do not want to leave it there uh, because fear will come back. We are forgetful people, is uh, human beings. Um, and we are, we distort. So we distort information, we generalize information and we forget real experiences. So we may have this fear creep back up in 12 months time and forget that actually I can overcome this because we didn't review it and we let that fear stop us again. So it's important that we take time to recognize what the fear is, how we've overcome it and the effect and the benefits that we've had from it. So it's just taking time to what to, to ask yourself, what did you learn? Was it worth being scared this whole time? Do you feel freer, stronger? Do you have more, um, do you have more independency? Do you feel more confident? And was it as scary as you first thought? Um, just uh, keep an eye on the time, guys. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, but there we go. So that is the fear, how, how to overcome fear is find, embrace, action and review. Find the fear, embrace the fear, take action to eliminate the fear and review. What did you learn from it? Was it even real? Was it worth being scared in the first place? Um, so yeah, just want to recap um, what, we, what I've kind of touched on this evening. I've um, got a couple couple more things I just want you to go away with, but uh, this is pretty much the recap. Um, so being confident is about trusting yourself in any given situation um, and how if we haven't felt confidence pre confident previously, it's not because of our abilities. It's not because we aren't very good. It's because we've believed this preconception or this, this, this outdated, we have this outdated belief about, about ourselves that was created at the very start of our experience with that situation. So the very first time we applied for a job, the very first time we went on a date or we tried to achieve a goal, we weren't meant to be good very, we weren't meant to be good at the first time because we're not experts. And by expecting perfection that very first time, it's led us on, 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 on a journey of, of low confidence, low self-belief, where actually if we didn't have such high expectations at the start, we would have carried on doing whatever it is that we were doing and we would, we would have got better eventually and our, our confidence would have grown with that. Uh, we've also then discussed the belief cycle. Belief fuels potential, which fuels action, which gets results and creates more belief. And the alternative is low, no, low belief with no action, doesn't get results and creates more low belief. And breaking the cycle, uh, you just do that by taking small amounts of action, mustering the courage, uh, to generate the smallest of results, which will fuel your inner belief system, and will get that snowball effect started, and uh, and on that on on a course to to increase in your belief, and that that works with any situation, any topic, any any task. Really, just start with small steps to 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 get results. To re so you kind of trick your brain into into realizing that you are good at whatever it is that you're looking at. Whatever the goal is, you are you are capable and you are good at that. You just need practice. And very often we forget to tell ourselves, sometimes we just need a little bit of practice. Uh, fear is an emotional reaction to something that seems dangerous. We create the illusion of fear with our internal imagery and creating negative outcomes before they even happen. So we talk ourselves out of it and we stop ourselves from taking action before we've even done anything, before we've even got out the starting blocks. And we had the fear anagram, false evidence appearing real. Again, that's tricking ourselves to, to believe that something is, 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 is wrong or, is, or we should be fearful of it. Um, and we had the fear model, find, embrace, action, review. Um, so I just wanted to leave you with a couple of things. One of the biggest things in business is looking at looking looking at the company statement, your mission statement as a business. What do you stand for? Who are you? Who are your? What is your company? And what do you do for your customers? 
Now, I wanted to I wanted to flip this for you. I know we're not talking about business. We're talking about uh, we could be talking about anything. I, you know, whatever you guys have got going on in your life. But um, this, I wanted to flip this into a personal statement because very, very rarely do we take the time to internal to look internally and think about these things. So, if you can go away today and you can ask yourself these questions. What is your personal statement? What's your identity? Who are you and what do you stand for? What are your values and what's your mission or purpose in life? So when people talk about you, when someone asks someone about you, they say, you know, what is, um, what is John like? Or, um, you know, what's, what type of person is he? What does he stand for? You can tell you, you know, so this, what, what would someone say about you right now? And compare that to, to, to maybe how you would like that to be. If it's maybe not the, not where it is or not where you'd want it to be, but it's very powerful to look and, and to have a personal statement so you can actually understand who do you want to be? Who are you? Who are you right now? Who do you want to be? And what's the diff, you know, how are you going to get to where you want to be? What values do you need? And what do you stand for in life? And what's your mission and, and purpose? Because again, one of the biggest things I've just put it in there is one of the biggest things that can help with your confidence is clarity. Very often when we're in a situation of, of low confidence, low self-belief, uh, you'll find that in those, in those situations, we're very unclear on what needs to do and what needs to be done. Um, and we don't really know what to do next. So the more clarity that you can have in any situation, uh, in any area of your life, the more clarity you have, the more confident you will feel. Um, and that's something that I like to focus on with clients is clarity is one of the biggest things that we focus on actually is, is having clarity in any situation. Um, and then just some goal setting, you know, where do you want to be in five years time? Why is it important that you're, that you're achieving these goals, whatever goals you have guys, whether they're personal, professional, um, it's always good to look at over a five year period and really, really understand why it's important for you to achieve these, because that helps you to narrow things down to important and non-important um, time wasters, essentially. Because if you have goals that uh, are, aren't actually that important to you, then probably get rid of them. Um, again, that comes sometimes from social, um, social pressures. We think we should have a nice house, or we think we should have a nice car, or we think we should have this when actually a nice, you know, a nice car and a nice house might not be important to you. So take it off the goal list and put something on there that really means something to you. Um, how will you achieve your goals and how will achieving them benefit you and your family? And who, you, who must you become to, in order to, be, to achieve your goals? And that goes back to your personal statement and, and, and your values. Um, and this is the last slide, guys. I just wanted to leave you with some powerful affirmations something uh, something that's that's used widely throughout the coaching kind of industry and, and self-development industry is affirmations essentially again tricking your brain <laughs> tricking your brain into uh, into believing you are um or finally believing that you are the person that you, that, that, that you know you can be you're powerful happy worthy successful worth it admired confident strong talented and the list is endless you can fill that with anything you want i am dot 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 um as long as it's positive no negative 